In this video, we are gonna show you how to renovate an older home. All right, so we have four different projects here, bathrooms and kitchens dating from about 1900 to 1930s. This is gonna be a lot of fun, a lot of surprises, a lot of unique situations. So sit back and enjoy, and don't forget, we're gonna answer all your questions about this in the comments below at the end of the video. I haven't run into a house yet that had square walls. Love working on these old homes. These are my bread and butter. I gotta say, this floor is awfully comfortable. Wow. Wow, that's actually a rain cloud. We had all this space? The whole ground is heaving. Perfect, every time. So in this video, we are going back in time, literally. Back to when it all started. This is how Max and I met. We started shooting project videos from my renovation company. Now we're also going back in time because we're talking about old homes, right? So we have four different projects. We have a 19... Hunter's home, I think 1905, when we started a renovation there and unearthed so all kinds of fire damage. And so that house needed extensive rework on the structure and we brought in engineers and so there's a ton to learn on that project. The next project that we have on there, I believe, now this is an old red brick downtown Ottawa. It's your typical three-story home, but it had been reused and reused for so many different things that the home had lost its identity. And the homeowners there wanted to bring in a designer and bring that thing back to life and restore it to original glory. The third project is outside of town, it's out in the country. It's actually a really old log home from the mid 1800s. So this was a lot of fun because although we were using new construction materials, we had to date this bathroom back. So in this project, the homeowner did a lot of the designing and a lot of these materials we used were vintage looking, although they're all brand new. Even the vanity cabinet was custom made to make it look like it was made back in the 1800s. So that's a lot of fun. And the last project is actually, it's a 1930s home right in the center of town. And this is a bathroom that had been renovated a few times inside itself. And the space had actually gotten so claustrophobic, the homeowners asked me to come in, peel it all back, and deliver them a brand new modern looking bathroom. And so that was a lot of fun to work on that project. So if you're looking for a big project or just a little one, but you live in an old house, then this video is for you. Hey there, Jeff here again. We're in a Butte, 1908 not in original condition. This house has been used and abused for years by landlords, renters, and property owners who just didn't care. But I'm in love. I was made for a house like this. We've got 10 foot ceilings, original lath plaster throughout, amazing structure, beautiful maple floors from the region. I'm telling you right now, when we're done, we're gonna tear out all these walls, open up the space, brand new kitchen, brand new bathroom. This is gonna be paradise. Over here, we got the bathroom. What well, used to be a bathroom. It's about four by seven feet. You can see that at some point in this house they had some fire damage. Now, this is original two by eight lumber. Really strong, really thick. The original construction, what they did is they cut out the area here to run the heat ducts. So what that leaves is just a little bit of wood left. You can see the big split. Because somewhere along the way, they cut through the top of this lumber as well to run the plumbing. That's a no-no, because then all you get is a Two by one. <laughs> Thank God they used strong wood on the top and the bottom to hold this all together, or someone would have fallen right through that floor having a bath. Our job is to reframe all of this structure, make it strong and make it level, so that we can put a bathroom here again in the future. Well, what started out as a simple bathroom renovation uh, unbeknownst to us, turned out to be an addition to renovate the whole house. What we did is we exposed some fire damage. Fire damage was rather extensive. It involved the whole ceiling on this floor and involve the exterior wall right into the attic. As a result, there's incredible structural damage here. This whole undertaking is as a result, uh, an inspector never looked in the attic, so there's no one knew about the fire damage. The fire, the best we can guess, dates back to about the 1920s, before they kept records of these things. And since then, every owner has just been doing Band-Aid solutions and just patching it over. We had to restructure. New structural walls, interior, point loads, because we had uh, structural issues from the original builder as well. Uh, all new wiring throughout the whole house. 
Of course, the bathroom was renovated. Upstairs, we had to redo a lot of the brickwork inside the house and reattach the brick to the home. In addition, we wired in uh, smoke detectors, brought everything up to code. Our electrician did a fabulous job putting in lots of accent lighting. Half of these cabinets are original from the home, and the other half have been manufactured as a, as a duplication. So we've managed to get a, a great little kitchen in a small space, incorporate the island, um, lots of storage and, and of course it's still open concept so when you're working in your kitchen you can still be entertaining guests and enjoy this great big space. The way we're finishing this off is Jim from Prestige Glass is coming in and he's got a fantastic half inch glass that he's going to do offset, build off of this wall and just be a sheet of glass hanging here as a railing. Uh, it's going to be incredibly beautiful and it's going to keep the concept nice and open because the original staircase is pretty tight. These floors are original from 1903. Uh, most of this house from about here back we managed to keep but the rest of the hardwood flooring we had to take up off the floor clean it up reinstall it stitch it back together after fixing all the subfloor and sunken floor issues and then we've uh, just sanded it down a few times given a good polish a little bit of a semi-gloss shine we've gone with a glebe trim it's a very classic sleek line so thanks to the help to the structural engineers we were able to save this home from being destroyed um, it was right on the edge there of whether or not it was you know, worth doing. So it's a 110 year old home and now it's been brought back to life. It should last another 110 years. So let's talk real quick about what you're going to need if you have a renovation project of that scope. First, you're going to need a building permit. Uh, you want to get that in your window. In our region, we have to post it so the neighbors know that the government's involved in making sure it's built properly as well. Uh, secondly, you're going to want to get a good structural engineer. These guys will actually end up saving you a lot of money, okay? When you're working with a municipality or a local building office, they are very limited in the amount of flexibility they have with their rules for how to move forward. In that particular situation, we were actually allowed to let a lot of that burnt lumber count as structural lumber, even though it had fire damage, because the original lumber was so thick that even after you scrape off all of the burned wood, there was enough lumber left that it still satisfied the current building code. Now the city inspectors were not going to have none of that, but my engineer had no problem putting his stamp on that idea and that allow us to bypass the city's objection to that situation so we could move forward without incurring the cost. So by getting the engineer involved, we actually saved the house from getting destroyed, which was awesome. Um, you get a, into a situation where you run the risk of incurring so much cost to save something like that and it's not worth doing. And the problem here is it's a semi-detached. So the other neighbor had the same kind of damage and they're directly attached. There's no way to take down one half of a semi without affecting the other. So getting this project finished uh, took about six months and it was a six-figure project, okay? Don't kid yourself, this is not going to be cheap. But at the end of the day, the increase in the value of that home offset the entire cost of that project. And this is the key. When you're going to do a major renovation on an old property, make sure that it's financially viable. And if you're smart and you get good engineer advice and you have a contractor who's able to be creative with the, with the solutions, like how do you reuse the old cabinets, reusing the flooring? I know that seems exhausting, but I paid a young man to sit down and clean all of that old hardwood and pull all the old nails and take out all of the old filler and we put it all back together again. It only took three days to do the entire hardwood floor, but we didn't spend a dime on material. So, just a thought, right? That ended up being a really great idea, and we saved a few trees while we were at it, so there's nothing wrong with that. Um, so just in wrap up, remember, look in six to eight months. Sometimes the approval processes can be a little slow, and the project is uh, about $110,000. So uh, it's a big bite, but at the end of the day, like I said, that renovation was free, because now she owns a home that's worth more than $110,000 increase. All right, so the second project is an old century home. It's a three-story right in the smack dab in the middle of downtown Ottawa. So let's go ahead and watch this video and then we'll talk about what was involved with that one afterwards because it was in mint condition and it didn't really have any structural issues. Welcome to beautiful, historic downtown Ottawa. This project, we've got our work cut out for us. House dates back to 1903. It's had many uses over the years. It's been single residence, it's been multi-residence, it's been commercial. It's back to a single residence, single family home again. Two major issues we're gonna deal with. One is upstairs, they have no ensuite bath. So we're gonna incorporate a walk-in closet and transform that into a, a master bath for them. And on the main floor, the kitchen is absolutely unusable. It's incredibly small, lousy lighting, big windows that interrupt all the counter space. 
So we're gonna renovate it, take it right back to the original structure. There's lots of built out beams and stuff. We're not sure what's going on behind the walls. So we're gonna have to open it right back to the frame and start all over. So here in the kitchen, lots of challenges. What we wanted to do was incorporate smaller bathroom, more counter space. And in order to do that, we had some challenges because we want more lighting. You know, we sat down with the designer, we came up with a couple of options. We decided to go with uh, shortening the height of the windows so that we could have counters full along, along the wall. Um, this one here is an old wall. We had the brick guy come in and he structured outside, put in a new window. So this picture window now looks over the backyard. They have a beautiful garden in the springtime, so they're gonna be able to sit and enjoy that. You know, Structure-wise, we made the room bigger, made the bathroom smaller. Tearing open this house was a bit of a challenge. There's been a lot of surprises, uh, a lot of questions we needed to answer before we could really finalize our design. And once we established our space, we had to rerun heating upstairs to that point and to this point. So what we did is we came up with this coffered ceiling design where we're hiding our heat runs inside the ceiling and then we created this beautiful box effect to, to take care of that for us. Uh, very effective, beautiful, it's stylish, great lighting, and uh, really complements the house. Of course, we have the new two-piece bathroom. Uh, Lisa did a fantastic job of picking out some fixtures and space for here. Uh, really nice, the client actually picked out the wallpaper for here. Um, a gorgeous little space. It's off the kitchen, but it's not a part of the kitchen. All right, so in the upstairs ensuite bathroom, our designer, Lisa Hample, came up with a really gorgeous design. What she did is she had this vision of a floor with a brand new floor drain system by Schluter Systems. We've incorporated a, a 42 inch drain that's part of the floor. So all we do is install the tile, we remove the grout from that one area and the water just disappears in between the tiles. It's very sleek, very modern. The floor itself has got a heated floor system in it. Uh, beautiful for those winter days in an old chilly house like this. Accent, pot lighting, uh, you know, wall-mounted vanity, gorgeous sliding glass door system, uh, very sleek, very clean, very modern, and although it's a small space, it has a beautiful, large appearance. So overall, really pleased with the final look. Um, I think we, we've kind of surpassed our original expectation. Uh, we created some beautiful window ledges and sills for the, for the accentuate the glass. Uh, lots of natural light in here. Uh, we managed to be able to raise part of the, the hallway entrance. Um, and so that helps to create the space a little bit bigger. Uh, love working on these old homes. Uh, these are my bread and butter. Uh, any day of the week I can get in and, and mess around with this 100 year old dust, it's a good day for me. So this one's a little bit different because in this project, we didn't have a scope of work to start with. When you're getting a renovation done, there's two op ways you can operate here. You can go with a uh, budget-driven approach, or you can go with a design-driven approach. So if you're asking a contractor to come in and say, look at my space, how much is it going to cost to give me a new kitchen? That is a really vague question. The answer is between forty dollars and $400,000. It's impossible to know until you have a design. So with an old house, what you'll see a lot of is people come in and renovate the space by adding into it. Okay, every time there's a problem, they add a, a make the box bigger, run their plumbing, run their wiring, run their heat vent. So in an old kitchen like that, the only way you can proceed is you want to have a budget set up and then you want to open up the space to define the project. And then you get the designer involved and say, how do we get to the end goal, which is our budget, with the space that we're dealing with here? And so you need to have a relationship with your designer so that you can work together to solve those kinds of problems. And in this video, it's a perfect demonstration. That video was actually done on budget. The bathroom and the kitchen were both finished for under 60000 which is a miracle, really, when you think about it. But like I said, because the home was in such great condition, we had a good working relationship, and we were able to open everything up and define the space, we didn't have any nitpicky problem-solving situations to deal with because we had full access to all the mechanical in the house, which is right underneath that kitchen. So if 1903 isn't old enough for you, now we're going back into the mid-1800s. We're talking log home, full tree construction. Okay, so let's go take a look at this renovation. We're out here in the Ottawa Valley. This house is going back to 1830. 
Really excited to work on this old log home. It's got a lot of style, a lot of feature. Uh, unfortunately, back in those days, bathrooms were made quite small. So our client has a three-piece bath, which is a little unique because she has a lot of space on the, behind the shower wall that we're going to tear out and integrate into the bathroom, make it bigger. And we're gonna go from a three-piece to a four-piece by taking the closet off the hallway and part of the closet off the spare bedroom and putting in a shower. Some of the features that we wanna take a look at we have a fabulous new supplier, uh, Victoria and Albert from England. She's getting a volcanic bath, which is uh, the next evolution in a freestanding tub. It's stronger than acrylic, and as a result of that, it doesn't wear as fast. It also allows the designers to make a much thinner profile. So uh, a lot of sleek designs coming out of that, very stylish, modern looks. In the shower, we're using the new Kohler cast iron shower base. Uh, fabulous product. It's gonna give us a lot of ability to, to level off that shower in a very uneven home and give us a lot of rigidity so you won't have that bounce in the floor. For the vanity, we're having our friend David over at Ottawa Cabinet custom make a antique piece of furniture um, with a cultured marble top. It's going to uh, really uh, accentuate the home and tie in with a lot of the original look. One of the most exciting things for us is to tear off the drywall. This bathroom was renovated back in the early 70s and we're not sure how much of the original structure was removed before they put in the new walls. So we're concerned about possible structural issues, insulation, uh, infestation of mice, these sorts of things. We definitely want to make sure the insulation barrier is up to, up to code. Definitely want to see if there's any structure that we can peel back and get more height and more width. Uh, all of these little things. And then opening the floor, we got to, have to find out what we're dealing with for structure in there. We're really still unsure as to what we're going to find. So a, a lot of potential hazards here. Hopefully everything goes well. I don't like surprises. Um, so let's go in and take a look. Duck! Live wires in the wall. Electrical tape and rents. Isn't that something? Ladies and gentlemen. The sheathing cut right <laughs> off of them too. Yeah, that's a lot of exposure. You don't have to be an electrician to know that that's wrong. <laughs> oh my. All right, Scotty. So the changes that I've made in this bathroom were quite dramatic um, before we had a very linear space. So we were able to move the back wall underneath the slope roof. Uh, we gained about another foot and a half um, right up to this wainscoting here, which is a lovely feature. Uh, the client here wanted us to go with modern everything, but to have an antique style. So in keeping with that, we did some custom woodwork, uh, really great mosaic tile wall. Obviously the, the Victoria Albert tub and the taps collection is beautiful. The volcanic tub really works well here. Uh, it works well for a tight space. The wall on this side, originally we were just gonna build out for a shower and then the vanity would be underneath the window. But in, uh, in further consultation with the client, we found that there was a, a dead space in the back of a hall off the bedroom. And so what we've done is we created a wall there and made that the walk-in closet and we were able to push the bedroom wall right back up to the original closet opening, which gave us a whole lot more space. So now we've got a, a small 15 square foot bathroom that's become a pretty decent usable space. Um, of course, our finishing touches are simple. Thermostatic valve from Roy, uh, on-off controls, and then diversion controls for the rain shower or the hand shower. 
Uh, we've got the great Kohler toilet. The really fun feature here is we did a built out wall where the vanity was because we had so much depth when we moved the wall back. So again, we created this little custom wood trim, brought the mosaic tile over, bought a vitreous china top, uh, manufactured for another vanity. But the vanity itself was made by our friends at Ottawa Cabinet. David, in consulting with the client, created an antique piece of furniture to act as a vanity. So you can see all the great details, you know, the hinges and then the little key lock here. Of course, just to bring a little extra light in here, we went with a full mirror on the wall, pendant lighting, uh, nice soft muted colors, heated floor, of course. Uh, we have the flex therm floor heating system operating here. The house itself, because it's so old, has a really bad slope to the middle. So we were discussing options for leveling the floor, but that creates quite a dramatic effect. So in this case, what we did is we created a flush floor, opened up the floor, repaired some structure again, of course. Uh, nothing was ever done right back in the old days when they brought mechanical in. And then we changed all the doors in the house to these solid wood doors, antique knobs. So now, not just a renovated bathroom, a new walk-in closet, uh, a good flow through the whole upstairs, it's all been modernized with an antique look. And the next step for them is they're just going to get some new flooring in the bedrooms and hallway and the house should be complete. So originally the client had a budget put together of about $30,000. Uh, with all the modifications that we've done and some of the selections and the custom vanity and the tub that she chose, that was a little unrealistic. But at the end of the day, the whole project came in just under thirty-five. dollars uh, And you'll find in today's market, when you go shopping around, to get the whole renovation plus materials, all the mechanical, electrical, plumbing, fixtures, that's great value for your money. So that's a classic example of when you're renovating a bathroom, depending on the materials that you use, okay? This is all about material selection. You know, we talked about we finished up around 35, but realize this, that had we gone with material selection that was more off the shelf, shall we say it, uh, like a vanity from off the shelf, simplified the bathroom fixtures and, and a more basic clawfoot tub or something like that, that project could have realistically been brought in under 25. So at least $10,000 there is because of the choices that were made with the products, all right? So this is what we're talking about. You can go 25 to 35 or even more. There is room to go spend as much money as you like in a bathroom nowadays, trust me. Uh, the next bathroom we're gonna take a look at real quick is a more simple approach, okay? So this is um, a bathroom that had been renovated back, I believe in the mid 70s. The space was starting to get small, so as soon as I walked in, I knew this had been renovated a few times, and all of those renovations happened with the same approach. Here's a budget, make it happen, and the renovator didn't peel anything back. He just added a new layer inside the existing shell, and this is what you end up getting. So uh, at the end of this video, we'll talk about cost and timeline on this project, and we'll see you then. Welcome to Pat and Jill's. Um, this is a great little project. We're down in old Ottawa, a 1930s home. Um, Pat and Jill have had a couple of renovations in this home. They've redone the main floor, the kitchen. There's an addition done in the late 50s. Um, the house is very unique in the fact that it has a lot of really unique roof lines. Bad ventilation, carries a lot of snow, and carries a lot of weight. So what we have is we've been asked to come in and do a bathroom renovation. Um, the question that we have on our minds is, what is the condition of the flooring underneath? 1930s, there was a lot of transition there in the spacing of joists, direction the wood would be heading, um, the tools used to make room for plumbing. So we have this unique floor situation here heading into the bathroom where the floor really caves in towards where the tub is. And uh, we're not sure if that's a, a plumbing structural issue or if that's a low bearing structural issue. Um, either way, we're looking forward to opening the floor, find out what's wrong so that we can get some structural support in there and stabilize the situation. And uh, hopefully that's all that'll be necessary. Interesting style, great colors. We have a few questions about the way it was done. Uh, 
First of all, the ceiling. First thing I noticed is the ceiling has dropped almost a foot and a half from a normal ceiling height. The rest of the house is at a full eight feet upstairs. This is down to just a little over six and a half. Um, not sure where this fan is going. We did notice it's winter time so that we have a lot of moisture coming out of the soffit vents. We're wondering if maybe this is just ducted into the attic and causing us problems. Uh, not sure about the electrical here. Uh, just because of the craftsmanship in this room, it makes me wonder, you know, was this done properly? Uh, we have a custom-made vanity here, and, and you know, it's in desperate need of being replaced. And of course, our, our tub. Um, this looks like a drop-in jacuzzi tub. And so it's a combination of a drop-in and a shower. So we're really expecting to find some mold and issues, water damage in behind. This tub doesn't have an integrated tile flange on it. So there's nothing to keep the water from getting in behind the wall once it gets past the silicone. And uh, we all know that silicone on a flat surface when it's wet will fail. So it's just a matter of how bad the damage is, not a matter of whether there is any. Uh, we're gonna rip it all back out to the frame again. It looks like this renovation is very typical. It's layer upon layer upon layer, constantly making the room smaller. The floor is almost two inches higher than it should be. Well, the plan here is first of all to open this up um, get get our space redefined uh, we're going to re-insulate and vapor barrier get it all sealed up properly we have a jacuzzi tub here now we're taking that out we're going to put in a walk-in shower with some extra cabinet here for storage space the electrical supply that comes to this area uh, as long as it's up to code we're going to go use that power supply to run an in-floor heating system and then we're going to put in a new vanity new toilet new fixtures all around just modernize the whole space um, and just change the way that this operates, so it'll be in a glass enclosed shower to help get rid of the cramped in feeling. Uh, last time we talked, we were talking about the structure concerns that we had in the bathroom here. Uh, looks like somebody had done some renovations prior to this particular one and had compromised the integrity of the floor structure. Uh, sure enough, we opened up and we found out that was just the case. Uh, in order to make room for some plumbing for the new tub, the joist has been cut. Since then, the kitchen downstairs has been renovated, and it turns out, much to our surprise, that the kitchen company had restructured all of the floor joists to help stabilize the floor. So, uh, uh, you know, good on them, that doesn't always happen. Uh, uh, so everything's been stabilized to the best of their ability. There's another structural wall downstairs picking up the load just a couple feet away. So it looks like uh, everything's going to be okay in that regard. Didn't require us to do any additional structural work. Here we are at the final reveal. Um, project's all completed, and we're just gonna go through a few of the highlights. Uh, originally, when we came in this bathroom, the ceiling was quite low. Uh, it turns out that when we peeled it all back, we found that the renovation that was done back in the early 80s, uh, in order to create a much simpler project scope of work, they ran all of their mechanical and all their electrical uh, beneath the existing ceiling, and then reframed a new ceiling underneath all of that. Um, again, that probably saved a lot of time and energy but to end up with a really cramped space. So what we did is, you know, we've got original slope in the ceiling here into an attic space that we were able to access. Uh, unfortunately, our electrician spent a few hours up there trying to run everything, but uh, got the job done. So now we have plenty of pot lighting, brand new fan up here, run out to the exhaust out the side gable of the house. Uh, and now, of course, with the shower, when you open up and walk into here, we've got this beautiful big space with lots of headroom. Um, the client has chosen some really nice fixtures with a uh, the tower system that allows us to turn either the hand shower or the rain shower on. This door here, it's a nice product by Max. It's for a 48 inch space, but it gives you a big door. So you're not stuck with a slider or it's hard to get in and out. Originally the tub was a uh, Roman tub that had a jacuzzi in it, so it had power supply. That wire has been taken back into the wall to provide our power for floor heating. Because the home is 1930s, it has a tendency in the winter time to be quite drafty. So by introducing the floor heat, it gives us a second ability to moderate the environment in here. Um, clients have added lots of storage with a two foot deep cabinet here in the corner. And of course, you know, we have a beautiful mosaic tile in the backsplash, lots of storage, still a bit of a small bathroom, but with the illusion of a lot of space and uh, a lot more storage and a lot more comfort. Well, Pat, I just want to thank you very much for having us in your home. It's 
been a pleasure renovating your bathroom, and thank you for giving us your trust to do that for you. Well, it was our pleasure, Jeff. The way we found you was, as you know, through one of these online uh, videos, and it turned out you were exactly true to your word. So we didn't have any surprises. We had uh, a lot of confidence in what you were going to do, and you were very helpful to us in terms of picking colors, in terms of issues with the design that uh, maybe we hadn't thought out that well in advance. So we're thrilled with the, with the outcome. Well, we appreciate all of your effort as well. And uh, yeah, thanks a lot. So thank you for taking a trip back in time with me and Max here. That was a lot of fun to take a look at how we got started. Uh, now listen, there's no way you can watch all four of those videos and not have a question. So put them in the comments below and I will answer them no matter how technical they are. That is our whole thing. We are not going to start another vlog or another format or forum for having conversations. It's all in the comments section or else. All right, so you can stop emailing me at my company. <laughs> now, please like the, like the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you can't do that, it's because you do not have an account on YouTube. So set one up, subscribe to the channel. It only takes a minute and it's not gonna hurt you to have another email address. All right, um, at the end of this video, check the link, okay? The link is gonna be to our new section for all of our projects. And we're gonna start calling these reality rental visions. All right, just for fun, we're gonna start doing a lot more of this kind of project. It's a little more entertaining, lots of information, and hopefully it'll help to spur your design and imagination. Okay, see you next time. Well, thanks for joining us today. And if you'd like to see the projects that we're doing in the future, hit the subscribe button so you get notified every time we have a new video. Or check out the link over here and you can check out some of our past projects. While you're making that decision, I gotta find a new color.